right. Fire in the hole. Obama is the best president we've ever had. John Boehner, Eric Cantor, Mitch McConnell, they're the best congressmen we've ever seen. They only care about the American people and they would give up all power, money, and name recognition just to keep the United States healthy, wealthy, and wise. They fart rainbows, piss silly string, and love changing poopy diapers. Let's say, just for a second, that that were true. I know it takes more mental gymnastics than Donald Trump does each morning to convince himself he's a babe magnet with a full head of hair. But let's just pretend it's true, and that you're fine with the massive NSA spying program because you believe the government and the media have our best interests at heart. Then let me ask you this. What happens with this massive surveillance infrastructure when a dictator does get into the Oval Office? When a tyrant who doesn't fart rainbows works his way to the top of our political system? He or she would have a full surveillance state at their fingertips. Every tool a dictator could ever want. Like a kid in a candy store. Like Toronto Mayor Rob Ford in a crack den. Oh, look at all this stuff. Do I want to play with the spying on every phone call toy or, or the looking at every email trinket? But then there's indefinite detention of American citizens without a trial or charges and extraordinary rendition and torture. That sounds amazing. But why do I need that when I have a brand new kill list that includes American citizens? I can't, I can't believe the American people gave me all these toys. And they, and they crucified the guy who told them not to. They literally, they literally imprisoned the messenger. <laughs> I can't breathe, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. I think it might look a little like that. Here in the US, there are over 66,000 bridges in desperate need of repair. Our roads are crumbling and our newest train tracks were built by slaves when slavery was legal. So we don't have the time or money for that kind of infrastructure, but we have more than enough time, money, and will to put in place a full front to all powerful surveillance infrastructure, a dictator's toolkit waiting to be used. Hey, we're here at the Restore the Fourth March, the Restore the Fourth Amendment, on a July 4th. It's a good time. But we have the guarantee of the, the NSA and the police that they are not watching us, at least for today. They're giving us the day off. But I don't know what the fuck goes on in that tent. No, you don't understand. I'm really sick. I'm sure you are, Lieutenant, but there's currently a 10-month waiting list for claims. No, no. See, I've got... Um... Al-Qaeda problems? What was that? I said I've got Al-Qaeda problems. I've, uh, jihad a lot of pain lately. Uh, in my chest. Sir, is everything okay? No! All of my body hurts. Like, all of it. All of. Like, even my groin? I'm worried I might be infidel. Infertile? Yeah. Infidel. You're saying a different word. Oh, I see. Death to America. Sir, what is going on? Uh, martyr! Dirty bomb! Suicide vest! Freeze! NSA! You're coming with us, you piece of trash! Yes! Thank God. Take me to that sweet, sweet prison infirmary. Hello? Uh, sir? H huh. A lot of Americans don't seem that concerned about all this suspicionless, warrantless surveillance that's going on, so I figured I'd go ask them about it. Because reading all their emails was taking forever. <laughs> You know, it came out that the government basically is tracking all these emails. Do you care that they're doing that? Yeah, I care because that's a violation of privacy, I believe. Well, this country was based on freedom. And I... Where did you hear that? I haven't heard that. I have nothing to hide, so it doesn't bother me. I don't like everybody knowing my business. Because you have something to hide? Not at all. Nothing to hide. Let me see the phone, then. My phone? You have nothing to hide. Can I see your phone? Hold on, can I see in your bag? <laughs> oh, you were right. You should be proud. Yeah. You should be proud. You're choosing You're choosing freedom. Fuck safety. I don't believe it has anything to do with safety. What are they going to save me from if they look in my emails? All these terrorist attacks. They're everywhere. 
man, you guys are paranoid, brother. Our constitution says we are free from unwarranted search and seizure, but we're kind of done with that one, right? So we just like white it out. Is seizure really the same as reading emails? Searching emails, yes. Do you think we're being watched right now? Yes. Yes, I do. Whoa! Have something on spying? Yes, we do. You know what? I'm done. The NSA is not spying on Americans. Read the documents, not the articles, if you have any brains at all. I know for a fact Snow is a traitor. I know for a fact our national security has now been harmed. I know for a fact the U.S. is not spying on its own citizens in mass. So the NSA is not spying on Americans is, is what you say. You know for a fact they're not. Uh, well, there, there's, a, there's a man named James Clapper, who's the head of our national intelligence, and he was in front of Congress, and he was asked whether they collect information on millions of Americans, and he said... Not wittingly. No, not wittingly. He then later was asked again, and he said that that was the least untruthful answer he could give. I responded in what I thought was the most truthful or least untruthful manner. If Mr. I know for a fact knew what he was talking about, he'd know the man's name was Snowden and not Snow. Damn straight! Right there. I'm here with Chris Hedges, Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, author of Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt. Chris Hedges, Chris Hedges, Chris Hedges. Thanks for making it to my library, Chris. This episode, we've been focusing a lot on the NSA uh, surveillance infrastructure. A lot of people are saying about the revelations, we already knew them all. Well, we didn't know them all. Edward Snowden provided the facts that laid bare how extensive this monitoring is. But it's the only way to keep us safe, right? Well, of course, you know, it has nothing to do with keeping us safe downloading all of the personal correspondence, messages, phone records of American citizens has zero to do with keeping us safe or zero to do with fighting terrorist groups. I covered Al-Qaeda for the New York Times. They knew they were being monitored. I mean, even at that time, they were sending all of their messages coded. You've uh, talked a lot about Obama. You've called him an employee. And I was just wondering who he's an employee of and how do I get a job there? Goldman Sachs, ExxonMobil, TransCanada, Bank of America, um, that's who he works for. And if he didn't work for them, he wouldn't be there. Uh, and that's why there's almost complete continuity on all of the major structural issues between George W. Bush and Barack Obama, with the exception that uh, Obama's assault on civil liberties has been worse. They are creating legal mechanisms by which any form of mass protest or dissent becomes criminal activity. Section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act permits the U.S. military to uh, seize American citizens and hold them in the language of this section until the end of hostilities, which in which is permanent right. war is forever. I now, think it's right around the corner, no? End of hostilities? Well, there's a lot of people who are going to make sure that hostilities never end because um, they're making uh, huge bucks off of it. You called it uh, inverted totalitarianism, and I am very smart and know exactly what that means, but some people don't. So could you explain it to well, them? Well, that's not my term. That's uh, the Sheldon Wolin. By that he means it's not classical totalitarianism. It doesn't find its expression through a demagogue or a charismatic leader, but through the anonymity of the corporate state. In inverted totalitarianism, you have corporate forces that purport to pay fealty to electoral politics, the iconography and language of American patriotism. Over the last five years, no other energy company has invested more in the U.S. than BP. We're working to fuel America for generations to come. And yet internally have seized all of the levers of power as to render the citizen impotent. I was talking to some of my libertarian friends and they, you know, were sitting around a campfire with a keg and a lot of firearms. And uh, they say the answer is free the markets. The markets have to be free, and then it would fix everything. You know, freeing up the markets means freeing up the very forces that um, 
are going to bring the whole planet down. Shell Oil looks at the melting of the summer Arctic sea ice, 40% now, which is gone, uh, as a business opportunity. It's the death throes of the planet. They're dropping half billion dollar drill bits. They're mining the last vestiges of oil, gas, minerals, and fish stocks. It's insane. It'll kill us, I mean, quite literally, as a species. So things sound good. Yeah, it's great. That's right. At the Freedom Plaza occupation in 2011, I, I asked you, what do you say to people who say that uh, this occupation and various protests don't matter? And your response, two words, was, fuck them. How do we fuck them? <laughs> by stop being afraid. Yeah. By stop believing the lies that tell us. And by carrying out mass acts of civil disobedience to start messing up the machine so that it doesn't work. Um, that's all we have left. I'm not naive enough to tell you it's going to work. Uh, but by sitting around sort of waiting for Obama to be Obama, it's about like writing letters to Uncle Joe Stalin, you know, if you only knew about the horrible famine in the Ukraine. What do you tell your kids about the future, and what gives you hope? I have four children, ranging in age from two and a half to 23. I tell them that resistance is a moral imperative. Going to jail is more time than I care to donate to the U.S. government, uh, but I don't think there's any option left, and I want them to look back, and even if I failed, to be able to say at least their father tried. Well, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, I really appreciate all. it. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. On this spot a few hundred years ago, George Washington took the oath of office where he declared that he would preserve and protect the Constitution. So if he were here today and he took those words seriously, I think he would have been at this protest. Yeah.